on the ground uh, shows the opposite as children continue to die women continue to die elderly people continue to die most of the casualties and most of the fatalities uh, since since Wednesday since the uh, the assassination of Hamas's military uh, uh, commander that most of them were civilians and uh, uh, earlier uh, on Monday we went to the Shifa hospital we spoke to the minister the Palestinian Minister of Health in Gaza and we, we saw the, the children and uh, in a comatose uh, state and the, the doctors uh, are helpless and they can't do anything to help them because of of the lack of proper equipment and proper proper uh, uh, medications to treat uh, those wounded okay Ashraf stay on the line with us we're now going to cross over uh, to Hisham Talawi uh, he's joining us uh, from Louisiana he's the host of current issues and uh, current issues TV and radio many thanks for joining us here on press TV Mr. Talawi now looking at the situation in Gaza you previously said that what is happening is not just a military incursion it's a political process would you care to elaborate on that sure it's uh, what is happening now is uh, Israel number one is trying to uh, flex its missiles for many reasons uh, number one to show that Israel can go uh, on its own without the uh, uh, actually this thing took place without the blessings of uh, the United States and without the blessings of Barack Obama uh, even though Barack Obama publicly is uh, saying that he stands with Israel and uh, that Israel has the right to defend itself uh, but uh, this is basically uh, uh, Israel is telling Obama that they can do and they wanted to see what the response from the United States is going to be testing the new uh, administration but at the same time let's not forget that there is a uh, uh, an election coming up in uh, 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 in what's so-called Israel, and uh, Netanyahu, after the defeat of Romney in the United States, Netanyahu thinks he's in a very bad spot with his coalitions there, and they're trying to actually correct that. But uh, uh, as a matter of fact, what they are doing is the opposite. This thing, uh, this adventure which they did not really believe that the resistance in Gaza was going to uh, uh, show them what they can do. And now Netanyahu is trying to go back and see how he can save himself, save Israel, save faith into uh, not going through this war, this full-scale war. But at the same time now, he put himself in a very bad spot that the people there uh, want a response to all these rockets that are raining on, uh, uh, on them, on, on, on the so-called Israel. So that's where the political mess that Netanyahu put himself in. But this is to show also that the whole world, the whole community, uh, uh, world committee, international committee, whatever that means, it is on the side of the, of the uh, Palestinians, and not, they don't see where Israel really is in need to defend themselves from unarmed people and all they are doing is killing children they're not killing soldiers they're not killing uh, another army they're killing nothing but children and women indeed also joining us now on the line uh, is from washington is the imam of washington islamic center uh, muhammad al-asi many thanks for joining us here on press tv uh, now imam al-asi i'd like to get your opinion if i may on the way the equations on the ground have changed indeed uh, with the response we've seen coming out of Gaza by the Qassam Brigade, brigades, uh, by the Al-Quds forces. Um, do you think now as Israel uh, says that it wants to enter uh, talks about a truce and its only condition is that these rockets uh, stop coming from Gaza uh, shows a sort of a desperation on the part of the Israelis to just clean up this mess that they've created well yes in a sense there is a, a very big conundrum that the Israelis got themselves into uh, because of this fascist right-wing um, uh, form of government that they have. Um, they are approaching a time of elections, and they thought that, uh, I think some of them calculated, and there may have been some serious uh, arguments behind closed doors, uh, 
uh, concerning this. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the argument won over that uh, they will uh, take a risk and uh, try to gain some political points by using their military against Gaza. And uh, their suspicions uh, came true in the sense that uh, they encountered a, uh, uh, a new type of warfare in which uh, their population centers uh, basically Tel Aviv, but in addition to that, uh, Ashkelon or Ashkelon and uh, some other of their towns now are within the range of these missiles that were previously not in the military theater, uh, uh, backfired on the uh, politicians in Tel Aviv who thought that it would be a very um, uh, comfortable, in a sense, military operation. Uh, now, uh, so to speak, uh, because they are going to have to rely on their uh, political back channels uh, to undo uh, this uh, military um, dead end that they find themselves in. And so you can, I guess, uh, surmise that their communication with Washington is in high pitch so that Washington, on behalf of Tel Aviv, uh, can work its magic in such places as uh, Cairo and uh, uh, the Arabian Peninsula uh, nation states, in addition to Turkey. I think these channels right now are hectic in communicating to each other how to try to stake face for the Israeli politicians who got into this mess. I think this is one important component. But the other important component is that the, the Israelis always have uh, what they call their military, uh, all of this. And uh, I don't dismiss uh, the crazies in the Israeli military from saying, no, wait, wait a minute, we began this, and we think we can end it militarily. We don't need uh, the political and diplomatic channels to do this. And they will bring out, you know, their massive military firepower in the form of almost 800 uh, warfare planes and begin uh, what may amount to a type of genocidal policies, and war crimes will be all over the Gaza map as a consequence of this. So I think uh, the coming few days uh, will show us uh, which argument is going to be stronger. Is it, is it the political one or the military one in the, in the Israeli establishment? And if uh, history is any lesson, I regret to say this, uh, but uh, uh, the past indicates that the military has the highest voice in that uh, establishment in Tel Aviv. And this, we may be right now uh, in the calm that uh, comes before the storm. Right, Mr. Talawi, uh, tell me, right now we're seeing uh, ha uh, Hamas and Fatah uh, expressing unity with uh, the Gazans. They have united for the Palestinian cause against Israel. This is something the Palestinian people have been hoping for, uh, praying for, and now they're seeing it happening as well. Uh, do you think that no matter what happens, a ground invasion or a truce, this is really helping uh, with the Palestinian cause to see their leaders unite behind uh, the people, uh, what they stand for, and, f and freedom for the Palestinian people? Well, uh, this is not. Th this is probably the biggest mistake that Netanyahu has made in his life, and I really do believe that it will end up uh, uh, finishing his career, his political career. This is, did not just bring Hamas and Fatah together. This brought. This brought all the Arab people who were at odds with each other. It brought them together. We are seeing a different momentum. This is bringing the Muslim countries into a different momentum. This is going to actually unite not just the uh, uh, Palestinians, but also the Arabs and the Muslims. We should start seeing closeness between Muslim nations into facing this, uh, the real threat. The real threat was not just the regime, the puppet regime, the real threat was the Zionists in the world. And now we should see Muslim countries, Muslim people, the Arab countries, pushing for this so-called international uh, uh, community to actually uh, uh, put pressure, not just put pressure, but actually punish Israel 
and and they can do that. They have the resources to do that. This is a time where no more people should not be afraid. Countries should not be afraid of the United States. Countries should not be afraid. They should make a stand. All these countries should make a stand to stop Israel and in turn help the United States actually get this huge package off its back because the Israelis are ruining the United States reputation. They are ruining the uh, economy. And I think this is time for people around the world and people in the Islamic countries to start pushing, uh, to start putting actually pressure on their governments to stand up, make a real stand. This is the time. We no longer live in these regimes like the Mubarak regime or Gaddafi regime. Now we are, we, we, we live in these revolutionaries and these revolutions now should actually bloom and they should bloom on opposing Zionism, not fighting amongst each other. And they should unite. It shouldn't be just Fatah and Hamas. It should be all uh, Arabs and all Muslims should unite. Okay, before I get on to the topic of what other countries can do for the people of Palestine, let me cross back to our correspondent, uh, Ashraf Shannon. He's standing there live uh, from the Gaza Strip as these airstrikes continue. We're ending the sixth day, going into the seventh. Ashraf, what are the people in Gaza making of this unity between their leaders of both Fatah and Hamas? When you talk to anyone here, Kenes, uh, right now all they think of is how to, to survive through this uh, new ordeal. This is the, we're entering the seventh day of the Israeli onslaught on Gaza, and people here are struggling to cope with the fact that it's hard for them to, to go out of their homes, hard for them to, to go to the stores, because everywhere you go, the stores are closed, and even even to to get out of the house people in gaza the, most of the people in gaza nearly 1.7 people they feel imprisoned in their own homes because they are afraid to go out out to the street they might get uh, hit just randomly by the israeli uh, missiles that uh, d did not stop uh, since since wednesday so uh, this unity thing between fatah hamas honestly is not I don't think it's on anybody's mind right now. Although, for example, today we saw a delegation from the West Bank, including the head of the uh, the doctors union. They came to Gaza in solidarity with the uh, with the people in Gaza and tried to help the medical teams in Gaza. But what most people here want is they they're calling for for the for the Muslim nation to to, to step up and help them to uh, d defeat this Israeli aggression and help them stop this Israeli aggression. They don't want the talk. They don't want, you ask people, they tell you, we don't want the aid. We want, some people you talk to, they say, send us weapons. We want to fight. We need weapons to fight. We don't, we didn't need food, you know, because many here for, for the past 63 years, since the establishment of this so-called Israeli entity, they don't feel like they're living. All right, um, Imam al Asi. speaking of uh, what can be done to help the Gazans. Now, we've uh, seen uh, Gaza being let down time and time again. Right now, uh, the Arab, an Arab League ministerial delegation had arrived in Gaza. We saw the Tunisian foreign minister uh, go to Gaza. Egyptian prime minister went in to condemn the atrocities. It was quite a nice photo op for him, even though the peace, the Camp David Accord between Egypt and Israel is still on uh, the Qatar of Amir has condemned the Israeli strikes on Gaza. He can send uh, fighter jets to Libya. He can arm rebels in Syria, but he cannot do that for the people of Palestine. Also, the Turkish Prime Minister has called Israel a terrorist state and yet maintains economic, political, and military relations with Israel. They are talk, uh, talking the talk, but nobody seems to be walking the walk. Uh, that's exactly it. You put your, your hand right on it. Uh, the, the, the whole issue has been diagnosed, and it's left up to uh, public opinion, uh, wherever that public opinion is, to make a move. I think uh, these uh, false promises and these uh, dodgy statements uh, that are churned out on occasions like this by officials uh, from these governments uh, in the area 
uh, have uh, proven on many, many previous occasions to be uh, just em- empty statements. Uh, this is not the time. Like, take Jordan. Jordan, for example, still has the uh, Israeli ambassador there, there sitting in Amman. What's he doing there? What? Why? Why can people uh, live uh, through circumstances like this? Uh, in Jordan in particular, when there have been demonstrations on and on, uh, and uh, the ambassador still sits there. I, you know, the government, can, the, these governments can say whatever they want to say uh, to uh, distance themselves uh, from the actual responsibilities. This is a time when, uh, if they want to do something, something especially these... Uh, uh, regimes in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, first and foremost among them is the Saudi and Qatari regime, uh, in addition to the others. Uh, it's very simple. They can say uh, for every day now that 100 Palestinians are uh, killed, or for every week or whatever, for 100 Palestinians that are killed, we are going to turn this, the oil spigot off uh, by 1 million barrels a day. And you can see the shockwaves running through the establishments of the world. Uh, the industrial world will come down like a boulder on the Israeli politicians in Tel Aviv. And they will cease immediately their military hostility. But these people don't have a spine in the Arabian Peninsula. And if they want to show some type of uh, bravado, they show it in places like Syria. Uh, the government of which has been supportive of the Palestinian people uh, in these uh, previous years. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding. It just takes people to open up their eyes and see and, and gauge the extent of the hypocrisy that is mouthed by the regimes uh, that do nothing except put on theatrics uh, when right now is not the time for theatrics. These people in Gaza are living under real threat. They don't know if they're going to survive the night. When they go to sleep, they don't know whether they're going to the morning. This is the extent of the danger, and this is the magnitude of the threat that these people are living. So let no one be fooled by diplomatic and political statements anymore. They don't count. What counts is the practical support that comes to people when they are in need. And, there, and these are their brethren. These there, people in Gaza, they are their brethren. Right, that's a very passionately put. Let me cross over to Hasham Talawi. Mr. Talawi, that's uh, an interesting point Imam al is making, specifically that of oil right now. Just at looking at the situation in Gaza, oil prices are soaring. Brent crude right now stands at $111.7 a barrel. Why aren't these Arab countries uh, using oil as a tool? We do know it was raised up at the Arab League emergency meeting on Saturday. However, nothing came of it. Um, We do know that the Middle East is very different now from what it was two years ago. But still, we are seeing this impotence on the part of Arab leaders, aren't we? Well, because the Arab, the so-called Arab leaders were put by masters long time ago, and those are the masters who are holding the strings. Even though we call it Arab oil, but the Arabs don't have uh, the, uh, they don't have the wealth, they don't have the capability actually to, uh, to use that wealth. That wealth is controlled by the masters that put them there. Now, uh, as we see, and as uh, Mohammed Lahasi said uh, very uh, uh, correctly and rightfully so, uh, that we see uh, these uh, volunteers going to Syria, we see millions of dollars and weapons going to Syria, to Syria for a brother to kill his own brother. But yet, when we are dealing with the Zionist enemy, we see the Qatari uh, foreign minister saying, "Well, we can't do anything. You know, we we can't do." Even though you know, you mentioned the. Uh, uh, foreign ministerial uh, 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 meetings in Cairo. Yeah, they said a lot in the during the meeting, but they could not come up with anything with the final resolution that that they can actually put. Even though it was so weak, there's nothing, no practical thing that they can put there. What it would, what it boils down to is, even though the oil prices and all these billions of dollars that the Arabs have, they do not control that. That is controlled by 
uh, there are Zionist masters sitting in London and in Washington. That is why. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Much left to be discussed, but we have run out of time. That was the host of Current Issues TV and Radio, Hisham Talawi, there joining us uh, from Louisiana. Also joining us from Washington was the Imam of Washington Islamic Center, uh, Muhammad al Asi. Also uh, on the line, live from Gaza, is our correspondent Ashraf Shannon amid the bombardment of uh, Gaza by Israeli jets and planes. Uh, Ashraf, thank you for those updates there. We're going to take a short break. Now we'll be back in just about three minutes' time with all your latest from Gaza and the rest of the world. Don't go away.